Welcome to the Marine Reference Guide's online interactive map video tutorial, where I'm going to give a brief overview of how to access the hundreds of data layers that are embedded within this map, and also walk through how to use some of the different features and buttons in the, in the map. So first things first, you can access the map at our website, howsoundguide.ca slash map. And once you're there, you can scroll down to, the, to where the map is, click OK to this short disclaimer, and then you're within our map. Um, the homepage for the map is relatively simple with only a few of the data layers automatically turned on. And you can navigate it like you would any, any old Google map where you have the zoom in and zoom out buttons up here, or you can use your cursor. Um, and as you zoom in and out, different data layers will automatically turn it off, on and off. You can access the rest of them with, in this icon up here, which is our data layers icon. So if you click that, you'll see all of these drop down menus that contain the hundreds of data layers. Um, so I'm just going to click on a few of them for us, starting with ecology. Um, and you'll see the different categories here. So if we go into fish, we can see the salmon bearing streams pop up. If we go into mammals, we can see cetacean sightings pop up. Um, and all of these data came from different um, data owners and curators. And to learn about that information about the data, which is called metadata, you can click the, the data in the actual map. And then this pop-up panel will show you um, what the data title is, a short description of it, where the data came from, and links for more information down here. So you can click, for example, the more information button, and it will take you to the website um, of the data curators, the people who own that data. And you can ask them questions if you have about how they collected it. Um, you can also access more information about the data by clicking the metadata button, and that's where you can download it. Um, and this is all stored in the Pacific Salmon Foundation's um, Strait of Georgia data center. So going back out, I'm going to take us back to the data layers panel. Um, one of the really great features of this map is you can see how different data layers interact and overlap in space. Um, so we've turned on some ecology ones, but let's turn on some human use ones as well. Um, for example, we can turn on anchorages to learn about where there's safe anchorages in the sound. Um, we can go into the mining and industrial category and turn on the cargo routes, and that's these ones that popped up. Um, and then we can go back up into our analysis, for example, we have a category for conservation and climate change, and you can see, um, let's go to the wildfire threat assessment in Squamish. Um, so I turned this data layer on and nothing popped up on the map, and that's because this data is located up in Squamish. So we can actually zoom to that by clicking these little three dots, and it will take us up to the map to sort of center where that data layer is. Um, and then I'll try zooming out again, and you can see where everything interacts. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's one of the main functions of this map. If you're looking at a map like this and you've kind of forgotten what those red circles are, um, there's another widget located next to the data layers widget, which is the legend. And you can click that to see what all of the colors of, on the map mean. Um, so up here, it shows the anchorages are those little red dots. Um, next to the legend widget, the widget is the name of these little buttons, we have our bookmarks um, or case studies. And these are kind of um, arrangements or, or groupings of data layers that the Marine Reference Guide staff have pre-selected to support specific uses of the map, such as um, planning by local governments. And so, for example, we have one which is the default view, which will kind of like reset everything, which I find very useful. It takes away all of the data layers that you've clicked on. Um, we have one for docks and eelgrass, which turns on our eelgrass data layers in pink. Um, and then the docks in orange, and you can kind of zoom in to see how those data layers interact in space. Um, if we go back to the default and then we turn on the zoning data layers, for example, you can see all of the zoning data from different municipalities and local governments and how they may um, sort of overlap and interact. The next widget over here is um, metadata, which is again that data about the data. So if you click any of the um, information in the map, that, that panel will pop up on your right. Um, we also have an add data panel widget tool, um, which is where you can upload any shape files that you might have and see how they interact with the, with the data in our map. And finally, we have kind of an about the map. Um, which gives a little bit of background context. So I'm going to take us back to the default view just so that we have a clean map and show you the two other types of information that we have embedded in here. So 
So I've shown the spatial data, which is that sh the shape files. Um, but there's a lot of information about the sound that's been gathered through research or for, through environmental assessments that's available in report form. So that's why we have these little PDF icons in the map. Um, and there's seven in total, six for the different um, marine units that we've divided up, which are outlined in blue, unit one, two, three, four, five, six, and then an additional one for any reports that have been done for the whole region. So that's what I just clicked up here. And you can scroll down. These reports are categorized in the same categories as the data layers. We have boundaries and base maps, um, ecology, human use, etc. So if you want to um, learn more about, say, the How Sound Biosphere Region Initiative, then you can click that and access it. Um, and if you want to get, for example, an Excel table of all of the information available, then you can click that button and um, download the Excel table, which looks like this, and then you can scroll through all of the different reports and they access it from the URLs. It's a little bit overwhelming to look at like this, but um, if you're super keen on diving into the data and we have a little bit of a background on how we put together those reports. Um, the final type of information that we have in this map, and this part is still kind of under development as of June of 2021, when this video was made, is our marine unit reports. And these are reports that we're writing that are more of a narrative report that will describe the different um, data layers and values that exist within these marine units. So this information is available both in a PDF form um, and also in a story map if you're wanting to sort of interact with it in a more spatially interesting or, or visual way, you can kind of scroll down and, um, and yeah, go through it. I, I won't go through that for the sake of time with this quick tutorial video. Um, so that's all of the information that shows up in the right hand side of our map. If we go over to the left, um, there's a home button, which just sort of takes you to that centralized view. There's a measure measurement button where you can kind of measure the distance between two points. Um, you can draw a shape if you want to kind of just see, for example, how big that area is. There's all sorts of different um, fun things you can do. You can print the map. Uh, and then finally, we have our share widget, which is actually quite interesting. I'm going to show you a specific function within this share widget. If you have a bunch of data layers turned on, for example, eelgrass or something like that, um, you can scroll into this link options and remember the data layers visibility. And that will make sure that you can send this link to anybody you want, who you want. And when they open that, they'll see all of the data layers that you turned on. And they'll also see like exactly where in the map, if you zoomed into like Boyer Island, for example, um, you can see that. Uh, so I'm going to take us back to the home screen. The final thing is if you want to visualize or operate this map in your full screen, you can click that button and it will take you to this really big view, which is very helpful, um, I find. Or you can just continue to navigate it within our website. Um, and finally, we have developed this map based on work that West Coast Aquatics done on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And the Pacific Salmon Foundation is creating a similar tool for the whole Strait of Georgia region. So. Um, feel free to explore those resources as well. They're laid out in the exact same way. Um, oh, and then finally, <laughs> we have our user guide, which is a PDF report. If you're kind of confused about anything that you see in the map, you'll be able to um, kind of just read through this and we have laid it all out there. So I hope this was a useful tutorial and uh, um, have fun exploring the map.